Walter and Carm from TK 3D Prints. Any qubit were good enough to send me one of their photon monos for review. This is the cheapest of the mono range that they have out and at the price of £200. I shall show specifications here now. More details are on the Anycubic website. Anycubic have done an unboxing and setting up video which I will also link in the info. What can I say about this? Now if I was trying to compare this against my Photon, there's been so many changes. It's got a 2K mono screen, it's got a new Z-Rod, new matrix, and it's a solid build. I've had no problems with the machine at all. It's very easy to set up very easy to level for anyone that's wanting to get into 3D resin printing or even just wanting one of them on a range. My Photon has basically been put into the back room, it's now a backup machine. This is my new favourite toy and uh, I shall show you why in a moment. If there's any questions that you'd like to ask about the machine, please put them in the comments and I'll get straight back to them. Now that the new Photon is using the mono screen, it's now has faster exposure times. And so I've been playing around with them and trying with thinner walls and uh, micro supports just to see how well it would actually cope. And uh, so all these errors that you will see on the video here, they are basically user errors, nothing to do with the actual machine. And I'll just show you them anyway because I still think the rest of the print, even though there were fails, came out really good. And I'll explain to you why they failed as we go through them. Okay, first thing I'll do is set up the uh, zoom. Auto zoom doesn't work very well, so I'll automatically focus it and then bring the figures to it. All these prints have been lightly dry brushed in white directly onto the resin, as I was using black resin, just to show out the details. Okay, the first model was a fail. But this fail was due to thin walls and very light supports. And I was burning this at 1.5 seconds per exposure. But as you can tell, the actual print itself, though it failed there, I think I was using a one millimeter wall thickness. Bring this up to 1.5 seems to have cured the problem with that. This print took just over four hours to actually print. You know, for a 200 pound printer, I'm very impressed with this. Oh look, there's even one of the supports I forgot to remove. Let's just get rid of that now. Okay, the next one. Again, I'm very impressed with the actual print quality of this machine. Again, this was just over four hours in print time. I've had to put the gloves on because I've been actually, when I've been touching the models, it's been lifting off. place links for all these models in the uh, information below. This again was printed at 0.5. I um, 
I must admit I've been forgetting to use the anti-analyzing because on the Photon version 1 we don't actually have anti-analyzing and uh, I keep forgetting to put it on. I have done it on one of the prints and I'll show you the difference on that afterwards. This was another failed print again. Thin walls was the major problem here. Thin walls and again testing with the very thin supports. But apart from user error, the rest of the print is actually perfect. I found with the Anycubic Black, it's at best, well, I've left it at the default settings to be honest. All I've done is uh, dialed back to 35 on the base exposure as well, which makes it nice and easy to actually get these models off the base. Just to give you an idea of the supports that I was using. I tend to use the Prusa supports and then export the model then load it up into the Photon Workshop and then slice it there. Though at the moment I have done supports, a new support setup for the Photon Workshop and I shall do a separate video with the settings and everything for there. Some of the new users might find it of more use to them. Yeah. Again, very happy with the quality of what this machine can put out. It's a 50 millimeter tall character. I think this took just over two and a half hours to print. And you can see where I forgot to put the anti-analyzing on. But again, you can't see that with the naked eye. And with a decent layer of undercoat, that would actually just vanish. I'm looking forward to painting these up, a little bit more cleaning up on them, and then uh, get to work painting them. But again, very impressed with the detail. And the speed that it takes, again, just over two hours. I think this machine is well worth the £200 that it is and as soon as I actually get the funds together I shall be ordering myself a Photon Mono X and then my Moai will be joining the Photon that's in the back room as a backup machine um, another large one again yeah, another 50mm character Once again, no anti-analyzing, 0 0.05 layer height. Exposure time of two seconds. Again, 
We're getting about two and a half hours to print. Give an idea for 28 mil. Just here, I had really thin supports that I couldn't even see with the naked eye. It wasn't until I actually went to take photos that I noticed in there, I'll actually include a photograph of that with the supports. It's the other models that have been shrunk down. mil characters take around about an hour and a quarter to maybe an hour and a half depending and that's a 0.5 layer height and there's a hero forge character one of the ones that they have on the site which is free to download In fact, here you can actually see one of them micro supports I've done just underneath the arrow there. I'll remove that before painting. Two second exposure, 0.5 layer height. Well, when I say 0.5, I mean 0.05. So that'll give you an idea of the Hero Forge characters. Again, this one was actually exposed at uh, 1.5 seconds during testing. It was attached to a base, but the base split. And due to the split, it was wobbling about a little bit, so there are lines going through it. But I'll show you again in a moment after upping the exposure and then putting the anti-analyzing on because I actually remember to do it this time. But again, you have, you, you know, I mean, me looking at this with my eyes, you can't see them layers. Unless you were using a magnifying glass and stuff, but I imagine they'd easily disappear anyway. So it's still a, a usable m miniature. Again, just over two hours, two and a half hours to print that. And here's the reprinted one with anti-analyzing on and already shaded for painting. Again, 
again at 0 0.2 seconds exposure and without the base I cut the base off I did hollow the model out using a 1.5 and as you can tell works perfectly So, would I recommend this machine to a new user? Yes. It's very easy to set up. It's very easy to use. Also, I printed a whole plate of uh, Futurama characters that you can see down here. Now, with my photon, I was never really filling up the plate fully because it tended to get fails around the edges. With the mono, I had absolutely no problem with it. In fact, you don't even get the usual noise when it's printing, where it's coming off the FEP. It's it's very quiet. And there were many times I had to go and check to see if they were printing, and there they were. Um, so would I recommend this to anyone? Yes, definitely. It's a brilliant printer for £200. Um, it's a solid built machine and uh, yeah there's not much more I can say about it apart from the fact that I am definitely looking forward to getting hold of the Photon Mono X uh, it's, it's build plate on that is about three times that size and I've, I know a couple of people that have used them and they're again highly impressed with what the machine can do so I'll let the print speak for the printer do I think it's a great machine? Yes, definitely. Uh, would I recommend it to somebody? 100%. I can't find any real problems with the machine. It's been a, a joy to use and I'm looking forward to using it in the future. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, any comments, be happy to put them in and I'll always get back to them. Bye for now.